This video is an excerpt from our weekly podcast. Go and watch the full podcast, check the link in the description of this video, or support us on Patreon at patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming. There's an interview with Herman Hulst, which we'll get to. He's the PlayStation yeah. boss, right? Head of PlayStation Worldwide Studio, so he is quite a big deal. Formerly the boss of Gr Gorilla, Gorilla Games. Games, which did Horizon. He dropped a couple of tidbits, but then some have been elaborated on by the companies involved. So the first one might as well go with is Sony Bend have officially announced they're doing a brand new IP. Their statement on Twitter reads as follows. We are beyond grateful for your support with Days Gone and are truly honoured by the amount of passion our community has shared with us for our world and characters. Your enthusiasm motivates us to continue to improve and create experiences that will last a lifetime. From the Siphon Filter series to Resistance Retribution to Uncharted Golden Abyss and Days Gone, we are very excited to announce today that we are expanding the Bend Studio portfolio with a brand new IP. We hope you embark on this journey with us and we can't wait to show you what we've been working on, Bend Studio. And pretty much all of the comments are like, yeah, this is cool, but where's Days Gone 2? <laughs> Which, I mean, they're going to get for a, for a long time now. But again, Days Gone 2 is not definitely not happening, but it's not happening yeah. right now. This is good news for people who are fans of the studio. Obviously, John Garvin, who was the lead writer, has gone. Departed from the studio, so he's no longer there. So Days Gone 2, and it wouldn't be written by the same guy. This is a whole new IP, which is exciting. I mean, I new IPs are always good. Well, not always good games, but always good to hear about. I'm looking forward to seeing what they're going to do, whether it's an open world game or not, whether it's under the PlayStation brand, so you can guarantee it's going to be a single-player narrative-driven game. Third-person action, probably. <laughs> Ticking all the PlayStation boxes. Uh, outside of that, we've got no idea what the world's going to be, what the gameplay is going to be like, or anything. So, Do you think there's a chance we'll see anything about whatever this new IP is from Sony in the coming weeks? Because it's E3 season pretty much now until the end of the month. There'll be different streams and, and, and showcases. Do you think Sony's going to show whatever this new IP is? Because they have just announced it, so it seems like yeah. it maybe that could be the perfect time. Yeah, exactly. I think I think the timing could be good on this, considering Days Gone has been out for a while now. So the, the new IP you're expecting three to five years, uh, depending on what technology they're carrying over from the previous um, game. So uh, I don't know, maybe AAA games are made these days with the high graph yeah. fidelity. You're looking at the, the longer time frame in, in that bracket. But it would be a good time considering they've just announced that it's not a Days Gone to, to the public. You know, this is a big an announcement. There's a lot of things that we haven't gone through yet but PlayStation have been busy the way I see it laying the groundwork for what they're going to be showing off in a couple of weeks because the E3 is a week and a half away this is PR groundwork as far as I'm mm -hmm. concerned and hopefully they will come up with a little teaser at least of what they've been working on so the other I guess kind of major announcement major in the sense is it's kind of a big deal for Sony but not major in the sense that I don't think there's a single person who would be surprised by this news at all God of War has been officially delayed until 2022 it didn't really what? have much of a release date before it was just some point in 2021 wow. and now we are what a know, surprise six months into it and they're like got six months left it's not happening we're gonna push it to next year i've only been saying it since day one but <laughs> <laughs> and it, just to get a head up top delays are always good i'd rather have the game delayed and be in a better state than have it early and it be a bunch of trash mm. i feel like you have to say that every single time now uh so their statement on twitter reads as follows since the release of the next god of war was teased last year we've been humbled by the amount of love our community has shown we're incredibly grateful to see so many people People excited to experience the next chapter of Kratos and Atreus's journey. Uh, we remain focused on delivering a top quality game while maintaining the safety and well-being of our team, creative partners, and families. With this in mind, we've made the decision to shift our release window to 2022. Thank you for your continued support. We've got some exciting things in the works that we can't wait to show you, Santa Monica Studio. Do you think maybe they'll show something of this game at this upcoming E3 season or something else from Sony Santa Monica? Because I think there's rumblings that the Santa Monica are doing a separate game in a in addition to God of War, so they're doing two games at once, One, the other one being a brand new thing. Do you think we'll see anything from Santa Monica in the coming weeks? It would be easy just to throw together some sort of trailer. Some, some CG thing. Have to, yeah, exactly. It doesn't yeah. have to be gameplay. It's not exactly what we'd want from Yeah, I'd rather not. I'd rather see nothing. Yeah, that, that's it. I don't want them diverting resources mm. from the time making the game to to make a, a gameplay trailer whatever or just to put presentations together a la cyberpunk or whatever that that ends up being almost completely fake focus your efforts get the game out uh, is the main thing it'll sell itself you don't have to market it yet yeah. keep your heads down 
get the work exactly. done. So now I'm just going to pop through this Herman Holst interview. Uh, Q&A with Sid Schumann, who is Senior Director of SIE Content Communication. It was a extract of a podcast. The full podcast is about an hour and 14 minutes long. The, this conversation lasts about 20 minutes, but there is a transcribed version on uh, the PlayStation blog. But before I uh, begin, I love Herman Holst's voice. He has such a perfect, soft Dutch accent voice for a podcast. It was so pleasant to listen to. So he was asked, do you see single player narrative games as essential to PlayStation Studios console experience? Absolutely, it's part of our DNA, but also said he wants to create a variety of experiences in new franchises, big and small games, just kind of different projects, and uh, finishes by saying, who says multiplayer can't have great stories? Like, like we kind of touched on earlier, third person action adventure, single player narrative driven is kind of their wheelhouse. Hopefully, they're looking to explore some new avenues, new um, creative things, especially in multiplayer, because I've said it before. Multiplayer sh could be a really interesting place to tell a story. I've just not really seen it yet in yeah. a way that r resonates with me. But I'd like to see that succeed. Yeah, I mean, who knows uh, who wants uh, multiplayer-focused games on PlayStation? I, I, I guess there's room for it. There's, um, there's, <laughs> there is an abundance of single-player, narrative-driven, third-person action yeah, games. they've got uh, that market covered. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, a little, something a little bit different. He's hinting at... Um, he can't, he's not actually said anything explicit here, but he's hinting that they might mm. be working on something multiplayer. Interesting note. Basically, this whole interview is him saying nothing, <laughs> nothing specific, but that's because yeah. he's, a, he's a Sony boss. It's a PR thing. Like mm. That's what they do. Next one was, how do you see partnerships like, not first-party studios, other companies that they had then teamed up with, like Haven, which is the one run by Jay Raymond, how do you see them fitting into the larger PlayStation Studios vision? And he said that there is a distinction to be made in that there's the ones we own, but like Naughty Dog, Insomniac, Sucker Punch versus Haven, Firewalk. He also listed Kojima Productions and From Software, who they have close relationships with, but they don't own them or anything like that. So he made that distinction, but then said that there is not, there isn't really a difference. You're all PlayStation. We all work together. We all have the same resources, which was quite a nice way to put it. I mean, I'm not sure how much I, I really believe idea, but uh, it sounds pretty. And he reiterated that they are a creator-led organization, and so long as they attract the best creators and then can foster the best creators to uh, make the best work, then that's all they really care about, which is nice. After that, he was asked, are you able to give us a snapshot of the total number of titles that PlayStation PlayStation Studios are currently developing for PS4 or PS5, and this is information we have heard before, but he said there's a lot going on right now. There's more than 25 titles in development and almost half are brand new IPs. The rest are franchises that PlayStation fans know and love. The next one was, how important is new IP for PlayStation Studios? And here is where he touches on the Sony Bend situation. Uh, new IP is the lifeblood of gaming. You want studios to be fiercely daring and take risks, which is something you can debate about Sony or you like, because you can argue that their games are very samey. But I mean, there's some, there's some interesting ideas, even if they don't always land, a la The Last of Us 2. Uh, new directions with established franchises, like God of War going north, so they want to try, try, change things up a little bit, which is always interesting. Uh, games that probably wouldn't have been made anywhere else. I wouldn't necessarily say necessarily say that's the case, but they wouldn't be made with such budget, such production value, because yeah, that's what you polish. expect from Sony, is the scale of it. Uh, then touched on the Ben Studio thing, said that they are working on a new IP that they are very, very passionate about, but also said they're building on deep open-world systems they developed with Days Gone. Open World systems. You I mean you gotta think about the um, the way the world reacts in Days Gone, mm -hmm. right? Let's think about this, right? The, the, the way the freaker hordes move around, and like there's other factions that you can set against each other, so you can just like set a trap for them both and hoard them both together, so you can watch them both attack one another. That's the an interesting system that yeah. works well in Days Gone. Are they talking about that? And if so, are they talking about an open world game with multiple factions that you can play off against one another? I like the idea of that. More minor things like Days Gone's weather. <laughs> Sounds kind of like a daft yeah. thing to say, but it's some, no, 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 some it's of the best weather in games because it actually influences the environment. Like the freakers respond differently in sunlight to the way they do in cold and rain. If they're in cold and rain, they are stronger and, and literally harder to take out. And then it affects the handling of the bike if it's all wet and rainy on the sludge for uh, uh, sludge and mud versus on the road. Kind of simple in concept, but executing it on a systemic level is probably much more, more complicated. Uh, it then carries on. How have the teams at PlayStation Studios been able to cope and adapt with these big challenges over the last year? So that's obviously with um, Pandemic and whatnot. One interesting point he points out, Herman Hulse says, uh, is the need for physical specialist locations for things like performance capture and audio work because you can't just do that on a computer. You need to have a human being in a place and often that's not possible. So that there's some clever <laughs> clever solutions like tiny recording studios in people's houses, which is effectively what this is. It's a space where I can record. Performance capture is obviously trickier because you've got to make a choice between doing it later on in the schedule, which 
can cause different problems in development cycle. Or the other, other option is to risk the final quality of the game by doing it differently. And then he quickly says, we are not going to risk quality. We ship extremely high quality games without pushing our teams to breaking point. Up for debate, if you ask someone like Jason Schreier and his uh, contacts at studios like Naughty Dog, it's, it's, it's something he has to say. He has to say, we work really hard. We work harder than anyone. But our teams mm. are all healthy and we treat them really well and it's all cuddly and fuzzy. Yeah, he's going to say that. He's the leader of the gang. Like He's the leader of the group. He is the spokesperson. He is the top of the tree. He has to say all the right things like this. Yep. Essentially, this is just PR. That's all this is. It doesn't mean anything because if yep. you look under the surface, you'll see reports that that isn't exactly the case. Fiercely daring and take risks, he said before. Are they fiercely daring? Are they taking a lot of risks? Again, uh, for debate, but that's a good PR line. And then he, he touches on two very big narrative driven games he's got coming up being god of war and horizon forbidden west and then says horizon is on track to release this holiday season but it's not set in stone sony is working towards releasing horizon this year around christmas time november december but who really knows when that's going to happen i still have my doubts i imagine they're very reluctant to let it slip into next year because they just did the big state of play been getting a lot of buzz lots of views lots of engagement all that and they, they need a big hit and with the gameplay being released last week uh, a lot of people are excited now i mean having seen mm. how the game plays how the world looks that, that it's still Aloy, um, even though some people are raising raising some grievances with how she looks this time, oh, uh, which is such ridiculous. A nonsense argument. In terms of how that game looks and the expectation for that game now, it's good news for a lot of fans who want yeah. to see it released by, by Christmas. Uh, and he also said God of War is on a similar scale to Horizon Zero Dawn, but it started a little bit later in development because obviously God of War came out after um, Horizon, so they, they've pushed it back. I quite like that. I think that's quite interesting because God of War 2018, it's not open world, but it's sort of open-ish. And if it's on a yeah. similar scale, perhaps it's going more open world this time, more, more traditional open world, perhaps. So then they followed up with, how does PS4 factor into PlayStation Studios development vision? Is it still a focus internally for future game development? So this is obviously, are they going to keep doing PS5 and PS4, or are they just going to drop PS4? Point of it for me. It very much is. The PS4 is part of the, um, the, the vision. You can't build a community of over 110 million PS4 owners and just walk away. And I think that that's really it. I mean, everyone who's got a PS5 is going to want it to be the best game possible for that system, and building it for PS4 will limit the, uh, the ceiling of which the game can achieve on a technical level. But at the same time, it doesn't make business sense. Not everyone's got a PS5 at the moment. You're shooting yourself in the foot if you don't open it up to that market. And it's a on what the game needs. If the game needs much more um, technical fancy stuff that the PS4 can't possibly do, then that will factor into it. But if if the, the vision of the game can be achieved in a scale which can work on the PS4, then why the hell not? I can understand people being kind of mad at it. I would love it if the game was just PS5 and then you could they could really go all out, but I understand it being on PS4 too. And he basically says where it makes sense to develop for PS4 and PS5 we will continue to do that and highlights that Horizon, God of War, uh, and Gran Turismo 7, all three of those will be on um, both systems. That is interesting because the uh, God, God of War, the recent one, was um, was pushing the PlayStation 4 to its technical limits in terms mm. of because it was because there was no transitions. It was yeah. just like the single shot, and they had to fudge that with the way that um, Kratos like snuck through um, little the, bits, lots of squeeze, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> squeezing through and uh, um, lifting up boulders and then climbing uh, and stuff like that. Just just to ham fist that essentially to make that work. The question is, how are they going to take that jump forward in visual fidelity? and world building that the next God of War you expect from without um, compromising the performance on PlayStation 4. That's a, that's a technical issue that the that the team has to solve. So, so long as they can solve it, then absolutely go for it. Mm. But if it becomes a situation like a, like a Cyberpunk, it runs kind of okay on PS5, but it's utter dog shit on PS4, there's going to be a lot of problems. We've seen it over and over and over again. Uh, although speaking of um, console stuff, he also goes on to elaborate about PC situation. How does PC fit into the worldwide, into the world view of PlayStation Studios moving forward? And he says, it's still early on for the planning of PC and their relationship there. PlayStation will be the best place to play PlayStation Studios titles at launch. Now I want to call attention to that at launch <laughs> moment because mm. um, that that really sounds to me like everything's going PC. It seems to be the the direction they're uh, they're moving in. Even even if it's everything on PS5 on day one. 
and then like two years later or three years later for on PC. Yeah. I think that's a perfectly valid strategy. A lot of people don't. A lot of people hate that um, idea, the, the ultra Sony fanboys who think they're getting the short end of the stick, but I think it's great. More people can play games, which is only ever a good thing. It means more money for future development sequels, and you can just enjoy it together. I don't, I don't see how it's a bad thing remotely. There is one more point in this interview. Another topic that's been out there recently is Japan. Do you feel that, from the PlayStation Studios perspective, that Japan is still a big focus for development? Or are you maybe considering a shift to more Western focus for game development? And uh, Herman Hulse said, Oh no, Japanese <laughs> games and Japanese talent remain extremely important to PlayStation Studios. I do not really believe any of that <laughs> for a moment. Uh, he says it's strongly associated with our legacy and it's part of our DNA. Then uh, names Polyphony Digital, which is the studio behind Gran Turismo, and a new studio called uh, Asu... Asobi, I think you pronounce it, in Tokyo, which is a new team developing a franchise for all ages with global appeal. But I mean, it, it, it's not really though, is it? If you pick, if they bought from software, then maybe I'd buy that they care about the Japanese um, development market. Clearly, it's the West, which is the um, the main focus. Maybe Japan is slightly there, but it's real. It's the West and American yeah. audiences. This this whole interview is prime Sony PR. That's all yeah. this is. He was questioned by it's a Sony interview by Sony people, like it's an internal thing. So they've decided exactly what they want to get across and instead of releasing um, a non-personal bit of information like a PR uh, marketing thing, they've structured this information as a Q&A, which it isn't really. They've decided exactly what they want to say oh, yeah. and then they've structured uh, questions around it so they can deliver that information. It's all set up. Like <laughs> there's, no, mm -hmm. there's nothing here. You know, he's never going to trip over himself. It's highly prepared answers. Yep. They've gotten the message across. You could read into why they're saying these things more than what they're saying. They essentially, they wanted to say all this stuff for very specific reasons. What The content of what they're saying is not like groundbreaking or anything, but why they're trying to say these things will be um, important for the future. Thanks for watching this video. If you want to go and watch the full podcast, head to the description of this video and you'll find a link to our new podcast channel or head over to patreon.com forward slash pretty good gaming and get early access.